Hey YouTube, so today um got a video for you. This is gonna be a multi-day video. Um so what I've been doing is I'm putting a lot of time into piling up some snow. Now uh, you might be like, why would you do that? Well I'm gonna pretty much build a snow cave and I'm gonna sleep in it. Um it's a Quincy. I'm really close to my house, so this is not gonna be like a far back in the woods kind of thing. But uh pretty much what what I'm gonna be doing is I just stacked this all up, all the snow piled it up, uh, so it's got to settle for about a day. I'm going to let it settle for a day, and then tomorrow I'm going to come back, and I'm going to dig into it. i got a whole process, I'll show you guys how it's done. But uh, if you're ever wanting to build a Quincy, first step is pile up a crop load of snow. Just for perspective, here's me kneeling down next to it. So, yeah, that's uh, step one. Uh, it's been a couple days since I finished piling the snow on the mound so it's had time to settle relax and sort of you know compress um and pretty much the next step here i'm gonna be getting some sticks about a uh, foot long i'm gonna be well grabbing a stick chopping it about foot long segments and be poking it through here and that's gonna ha be how i know my uh wall thickness so if i reach those sticks i know i've gone you know i've gone as far as i can go so that's what i'm gonna do now so yeah Okay, so now I've got a bunch of my sticks here all collected. Uh, pretty much the plan is is that snow mound, I'm going to go and I'm going to put these in every, you know, just miscellaneous, spread them out a bit. Uh, no real pattern to how I'm going to put these in. Uh, just enough that, you know, if I'm digging anywhere really around, I'll be able to stop and say, okay, it's getting too far. I won't dig anymore in that direction. So cue the time lapse. Alright, so that's uh, pretty much it for that. Um, you know, there's a bunch of sticks in it right now. That's just going to be my depth gauge. Uh, so the only thing now left to do is just start digging. Okay, uh, so pretty much now all I'm going to do is I got this little shovel here. Not a great shovel uh, overall, but it worked really great for this purpose where I got to get in close to dig around me. Uh, I'm going to make my entrance right about here. And I don't want to make it too big. I just want to make it big enough that I can crawl in. Uh, that's going to be important because if I can just make it big enough to crawl in, that means I can probably make a, a big old boulder, snow boulder, to cover it at some point. Uh, it doesn't need to be very big. You just want to be able to sneak in there. Um, now, when you're doing this sort of thing, making a Quincy, you got to be very careful that if you see or hear any sort of cracking or creaking in the snow that you get out because you can get buried alive. Uh, and it's very similar to if you get caught in an avalanche, that snow will come down, pack down, and unless you've, you know, got uh, the strength to push yourself out, you're pretty much stuck there, and you could um, die. To, re realistically, you could. Likelihood, very low, still possible. Anyway, cue the time lapse uh, again. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I don't want this time lapse to use up all of the space uh, so in my camera. So uh, 
you know, I'm just going to kind of show you guys when I get closer to done because this isn't going to be a 15 minute uh, take here if I keep recording. So I'll show you guys the progress when I get closer to done. Okay, so I've been digging pretty good. Um, so, I mean, that's almost long enough where my feet would just be at the door. I'm going to go a little longer, but, you know, while I'm doing this, uh, I just want to point out one thing. When you're doing this, you don't want to start caving it out or start you know, hollowing it out. That's not really the point. The point is to have an area you can go in and then a spot to sleep in. Now, if you're one person, you're only gonna make a it's straight back tunnel sort of like this. You're only gonna want to go straight back. Maybe a bit of room for gear, you know, if you really wanted to do that. But you would you would space it out so it's only big enough for you and your gear. Now, this one I'm gonna build for two people. So I'm gonna go straight back and then I'm gonna start hollowing it out to where I believe two people could lay in there with enough elbow room that they're not bumping into each other throughout the night. Um, and the reason I do that is you don't want to hollow, up, hollow it out because you want to leave as much snow on top of the pile and, and uh, sorry, leave the thickness of the snow. So that way you've got as much snow, you know, between you and the outside. Um, and now it's going to do two things. One, it's going to make it more structurally uh, integrable. Um, and secondly, what that's going to do is it's also gonna leave you with more insulation because that snow is our insulation. Believe it or not, snow is uh, holds a lot of air and that's why it's a really good insulator and that's why shelters traditionally have been made of snow. Think igloos and Quincy's such as this one. All right, so I am thoroughly covered in snow. Um, I figured I'd take a moment just to tell you a couple things. Um, one, uh, you know, this is, some people call it a survival shelter. You know, to make one of these things, you need at least a whole day. Um, you know, if you're one person and you're using your snowshoes or your hands or something, a pile of snow, it's not going to happen. Uh, you won't get it done in a day. You know, maybe if you have two guys and you pile the snow and then the next day you can car uh, clean it out and sleep in it, sure. Uh, but it's a high calorie, uh, you know, endeavor or task. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work uh, to just get that you know, hole in there dug out, it takes a lot of energy. Um, so, you know, your, your best bet, honestly, if you're going to be making a snow cave or a Quincy sort of shelter, um, you know, find a snow drift or a area with some deep snow. Because uh, for the most part, you're not going to be piling snow like this in a, a, a emergency situation because it's just going to take too many calories. You're going to be drained. Um, so maybe if you have a lot of food on hand, you're just lost sure you could go at it because it, it, it will be a good longer term shelter uh obviously as long as it's during the colder months uh but for the most part you're not going to use this as your your no your go-to idea for a survival shelter in winter. other thing is that with these uh don't don't be afraid to stop what you're doing go out and just look at what you've done so far so you're looking at this you know and then you come back and you take a look inside the shelter and you say okay well you know that's going pretty far back there uh, I don't think I have much more room sort of thing like I don't think there's enough room you know you could look inside okay you know I'm thinking I'm getting to the point where you know you keep a mental note of how deep that space is and you look at the back of the shelter and you say oh you know maybe I'm getting to the point where I should start uh, going outwards instead of back because you know, I'm getting too far. Now, I haven't reached the sticks that I had placed in there. Um, don't know why, but I was seeing light coming through in one spot. So obviously that means I'm getting pretty close. Um, so I'm going to stop carving it out deep and I'm going to start going wide. But just to give you a little view of what I've done so far, there you have it. Pulling the snow out is a bit of a pain. You sort of got to cross your arms and back out sort of pull the snow out like that if that makes sense or just pull it out but yeah anyway i'm gonna get to uh finishing this up and get to the last step Well, it looks like I'm almost done. Um, uh, kind of. I don't know. 
Tell you one thing though, you're not gonna be building a Quincy if you're claustrophobic. Ugh. Oh shit. Alright, let's go take a look inside, shall we? And here you go. Let's get on inside. It is hard to get in, which is fine. You kind of want the entrance to be hard to get in. Now there's a lot of snow here. I've got to get out. Um, for the most part, you know, she's pretty roomy. Yeah, so here I am inside the snow shelter. You're going to want to make sure that if you're making one of these out in the bush and you don't have a way to dry your clothes that you're wearing something that's waterproof water resistant or that the snow doesn't get inside your shirt or your jacket now here's the view uh, and you know this isn't bad my feet are right at the door um, so I mean it's not ideal it'd be better if it was I see one of my sticks have gone a little too far um, they do tend to slide in but yeah so i've got a few of my sticks here poking out so you can see that i stopped when i reached my sticks for the most part there's uh, another one actually I, I ended up putting that one in and like you can see there's no way to see out of there so i don't know if that's actually like that stick was there before just sort of in the snow but i've been chipping away at that side because as is you can probably tell there's enough room here you know for two people uh, if you wanted uh, you could probably have another person right beside you. Uh, might be a little too close for comfort, depending on who it is. But uh, my assumption is that the person that will be bunking with me will probably be Jill. Now, that's all, um, you know, me me just talking. But she has agreed to spend a night out here in the Quincy as long as I do it one night by myself to prove that it's sort of possible or whatever i think i actually came came up with those terms i think she would just like hop in here but you know i want to make sure it's good before she does um but yeah so at this point pretty much all that's left to do is clean out the rest of the snow <coughs> um because you know as much as that's an insulating layer i'm so close to the ground i might as well just go ahead and remove all the snow and then you know maybe throw some spruce boughs or something in here although i don't have a lot of pine or spruce that grow around here um you know my general forest most of it is poplar um a bunch of dead ash and birch um but yeah so other than that the only other thing is that i've got to light a candle in here so once i've cleared it out i'm gonna light a candle in here now what that's gonna do is it's gonna sort of melt the snow and form a bit of like a, a crit like a, an ice like a layer of ice um, over the snow so I light that candle it's gonna heat this space up melt some of this snow um, and then once that snow is sort of melted I remove the candle before it starts to drip or form icicles and that will cause a sheet of ice to sort of form uh, that ice will help the structural integrity of it um, and also um, you know that's that melting is going to happen anyway uh but that layer of ice is just going to help insulate a bit and also just give it a bit more structural integrity anyway here's the ice cave and uh yeah i guess i'll show you guys once uh you know it's cleared out and and all that back outside i just went in there for a moment uh did a video comparing the water resistance of gore-tex uh, versus you know russian uh, you know, Gorka, the fine cotton. So basically, you know, a, a waterproof canvas. But if you want to check out that video, link in the description. Uh, but for the most part, the only thing left now, uh, I've got her all hollowed out. She's completely hollow. The only thing now is to take this candle and I'm going to light it inside of there. And all this candle is going to do is as it burns down, it's going to release some heat. And that heat is sort of going to solidify everything, uh, like the ceiling, the roof, whatever. It's going to pretty much form like a crust. And that crust is going to help me reinforce the structure as long uh, as well as sort of test the uh, durability of it. You know, you could get in there and your body heat gives off, you know, some heat. And then you can have some shifting as the snow melts. 
uh, which isn't favorable. You don't want that to happen, you know, when you're in there. So you go ahead and you sort of test it with a candle because one candle is usually equal to about the same amount of body heat a person puts off. So I'm going to go ahead in there and I'll light it and I'll show me lighting it. So I'm in here now uh, in the Quincy and I've got my candle right here. I've got a lighter. I'm using a lighter. I don't want to hear anybody say you're not being bushcrafty enough. Uh, yeah, you try to use a sparker to light a candle inside of here. You know, maybe you make a torch or whatever, but sparker anyway there you go <laughs> there's the candle she's lit i'm gonna get the heck out of here this is one of the candles i made if you want to see how to make that there's also going to be a link in the description um so yeah i'm gonna get the heck out of here uh, and just let that burn basically i'm gonna let that burn out it's gonna burn for a fair bit um which is fine and then once it dies you know i'm just gonna leave it for a few hours let the inside of this thing crust up and then hey maybe next video we'll uh give it a test so i think as of now that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh you know till next time take care and have fun